Hiya. Hiya, can you hear me all right? Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Let me just get the angle right. Mm -hmm. How's the sound, Jay? Yeah, perfect. Yeah? It, yeah. Anyway, you can bring your head up slightly. You're quite low down at the moment. All right. Tiny bit. Looks better? Yeah, I think so. Oh, maybe just slightly to the other way. <laughs> now. You've gone other way? Yeah, a bit more. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfection. Absolute perfection. Lovely to see you, Jay. And hey, I so welcome to people who are just starting to join us on the call now. Uh, my name's Kate, I'm the director of The Big Draw, and I am very, very excited today to be with my, well, indeed, my friend and my ex-colleague, Jay Bang, who has gone on to superstardom since then, and we'll be spending the next just under an hour or so, just check on the time at the moment. So, yeah, we've got till just before 12 to catch up with Jay, talk about visual literacy, drawing, how he got started, all things Big Draw, and what you're up to now, Jay. Yeah, super, yeah. Perfect, I'm ready. Um, yeah, so people are just starting to come in. As they come through, please do, if people want to put a question in the chat, I will do my best to try and thread it through if I can. If I don't, then you know, we can always collate towards the end or I can thread them through to Jay after the session. I find these things tend to go incredibly quickly, <laughs> a lot more quickly than I always imagine they're going to. So, Jay, should we start? Should we start with City University? Is that a good place to start? Uh, absolutely, because uh, that's where my experience in the UK begins. Yeah. So, if mm -hmm. I can hand over to you, so Jay, Jay, introduce yourself. Say a bit about where you're from and when obviously you came over to study over here and over to the UK. So maybe just talk a little bit about why you came over, first of all. Um, obviously, you went to City University and you can talk a bit about the, the course that you did there. But do you want to just set it into a little bit of context for everyone first? Yeah, <clears throat> with pleasure. So, um, yeah. Hello, guys. My name is Jay Bong, as Kate introduced me. And um, I'm now currently as a, working as a senior curator at, in South Korea. But my, I mean, my career, professional career as a, in the art scene started in the UK, actually. So UK is my, not just on, only my, I mean, the missing place to, a missing, I mean, the very missing place to, I mean, for study, but also the, I mean, London is the city where my, uh, where the inception of my artistic creativity begin, began. So, um, so, I mean, originally I was a, Sort sort of a tech geek guy because I mean my previous workplace was um, was Samsung Electronics and I mean I assume some of you have a Samsung Mobile as well, so I'm I was I was at the headquarters of the Samsung, but I mean it's almost it's all it's always been my I mean the dream or some kind of a passion or my vision to I mean make myself dive into the art scene and make some creative practices and particularly in forms of um, digital media art or something like that. So, so I think, and I felt a, some kind of a clear limitation uh, uh, the workplace that I was, I mean, the working at. So I quit my job and searching for the right places to pick up my career. And I found out that the London is the city that uh, is that, then London is the perfect city for I mean, to start my second profession career as an art figure. So I quit my job and flew to the UK and I chose City University because it was, it was in the central London. So honestly saying, I mean, City University itself is not so much important, but I'm more rather interested in that it, is, it was located in central London, which enabled me to paste a diverse area of artistic practices happening in there. So yeah, okay. So this is a school that I want to get in. So I wrote, so I enrolled in the school, and luckily, I mean, the, while doing my MA course in the school, I had the opportunity to, to participate, join the, uh, to on board the big draw, the spaces. I mean, the the, the company that changed my entire life, actually. Yeah. Oh. So that, <laughs> Write it down. Yeah. Somebody quote quote him. <laughs> <laughs> 
bottom line yeah, was but really, you, you had a previous career, didn't you? Um, yeah, exactly. At, at Samsung. And I think, was the, so the course that you did at City, it was the MA in Cultural Policy. Policy and Policy. Management, yeah. Yeah, which is, it's a very highly considered course. I know, I know many people have gone through that route and have, have been, are doing incredibly well. Uh, but I think I think what you were referring to. So yes, they ran a. They probably still do um, a really fantastic scheme, didn't they? At, embedded within the, the study of of basically was it a, a type of placement effectively, but quite yeah. an, quite an extended. God, it seems a long time ago now. An extended placement, and that's really how you came in, and we were very lucky to have you. And then we never wanted you to go. <laughs> yeah, it was, was a really yeah, it was a really sad moment that I had to leave the big draw because of the some kind of, uh, you know, that the visa issues and all the, some kind of, um, I mean, the, the administrative limitations, but I mean, the, uh, um, uh, 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 the one year, uh, slightly more than a one year that I spent at the big draw was literally inspiring and unforgettable. Yeah, actually, yeah, def absolutely. That was, um, that was great more. I mean, the, that was a, every single moment was, um, was a, I mean, unbelievably great. And, um, you know, the, the City University that you mentioned, yeah, they had a, had a number of, uh, the, the core competency and the core benefit of the, I mean, the yeah. CPM course of the City University is that they provide a, a bunch of placements and some kind of, a, I mean, opportunity to, for the starters and the novice uh, guys to, I mean, the, to, to actually taste uh, how the, real field is going on in yeah. terms of in, yeah in terms of diverse i mean the culture fields yes yeah i remember i remember speaking to some of the coordinators there and i think it was it was yeah, it was very much that it was basically to give the students a chance to find out a bit more about what it might really be like you know with the good the bad and the ugly you know the challenging <laughs> aspects of it um the bits that are really exciting and fun but that like anything you know there are bits that maybe aren't quite as thrilling that we all have to do as well you know more of the sort of the the admin side i suppose but but yes yeah, so you came in for a short period of time and then we just kept you didn't we for as long as we could and uh, i know that you did a whole variety you did a whole variety of different uh, different jobs there but i think what was i think what was really interesting was from my perspective in the in the role of the director of the charity was that you are i think i think for me the fact that you had a previous career at samsung and that you were bringing both that digital savvy and knowledge and acumen alongside everything else that you were developing within, you know, through the MA course, but absolutely through your own, because you're incredible, you know, you're incredibly proactive. The MA was a great launch pad, I think, but you know, you were out there doing all sorts of things, visiting places, as you say. Um, those two things together, I think, have combined in a very successful fashion. Mm -hmm you i mean would you would you agree with that in terms of what yeah. you're doing, what you're doing now yeah absolutely agree so um so my experience in london is kind of a function as a fuel to to uh, function as a fuel to i mean inspire my i mean the artistic creativity and the all the inspirational i mean genres and practices all over the every single corner of the the city of london you know and that was an and I naturally, actually, I naturally became a, I naturally became myself as a, some kind of a perus membrane between the, I mean, the digital technology, the I mean, state of the art digital technology, and the, all the, I mean, the traditional and all the emerging and the contemporary art practices happening in there. So, so which, I mean, constitute my core competency as an art curator, even now, I mean, from there, even now. So, um, yeah, so, it was uh, it wasn't really it was a was really invaluable time because I know I I mean got the gist of how to become the bridge between as you mentioned the the art world and the tech world and so that make myself I mean going here and there hovering around and then create I mean the producing and curator wonderful practices yes yeah and it'd be great to come back to really unpick a little bit more about that art mm. tech and long digital aspect of things and art and maybe look at that over in, in South Korea and perhaps what's what's happening over here as well. But just to come back to, um, I was supposed to come back to drawing for a second or mark mm -hmm. digital literacy. I mean, is it, is it fair to say that before you came to the big draw, it wasn't necessarily 
the primary thing it wasn't like you know it was it wasn't necessarily the main thing for you but it has become more important it'd be good i mean it'd be good to hear a bit more about your perspective on that Absolutely, because you know that before I met the big draw, because I I didn't know even the notion of the visual visual literacy, because I think I think I have very very I had very superficial understanding about the about the about the concept of the so called drawing and also the visual literacy as well. So before I met the big draw, I thought that my thought was all about it, all about drawing is that okay, drawing is drawing. Mm, drawing is just a drawing. So um, that's my thought. And I had little philosophy about that. And then I had, I've never experienced, I have never tried a serious thinking or serious, uh, some kind of uh, provocation about that as well. But while I'm working at the big draw, I, I came to know that the, that uh, drawing is not just a simple activity that you describe something on a two-dimensional paper with the, some kind of visual elements like a line or, or some kind of uh, some kind of forms or something like that. So drawing is way much more than that because drawing, to me, the drawing is not just an action, but it's more like a philosophy or it's more like a creative process uh, or creative manifestation. What's in your brain to the out to the real world. So, so. That's the that's the most important learning that I that I, I mean, they studied from the big draw from the experience from the big draw. So um, so that's it because so it it does not necessarily be the tool for the drawing is does not necessarily to be a sketchbook or the pencil. You could actually, I mean, the, you could actually draw with anything and draw with anything and anywhere or any uh, places and any time in the world with a new, I mean, the, with a almost a unlimited, um, unlimited sort of tools you yeah. would like to use, actually. So my choice is also the digital technology and cutting edge technologies. But I think, yeah, so that's the visual, that's the beauty or aesthetics of the visual literacy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and the big draw is, you know, I probably, I could probably say the big draw is the organization that advocate this kind of uh, philosophy and the concept most I mean the passionately in the world as far as I know yeah so that's the okay, thing okay we love you so much come back mm. <laughs> yeah I do miss London I mean this this oh. I mean last it's global pandemic just prevent me from flying we to London well we just can't afford you now you're too important yeah um, but um, but no, I mean you know that I totally I totally agree in terms of it's you know a way of thinking a type of philosophy you know and it's not the, the whole range of mark making and how people approach drawing but as a tool for thinking for understanding it doesn't have to just be about aesthetic pretty pictures it's stuff that I know that you and I we've talked a lot about in the in the past and obviously when you were part of the big draw team but just starting to to go back to what you were saying around um, art and technology. It'd be good to hear a bit more about that because I know that you're working very much within that within that realm. Do you think? I mean, how do you think? I mean, how do you think? In, incre I mean, increasingly, do you think that organisations are embracing that way of working? But also, obviously, with the pandemic and everyone going online, you know, do you? What are your thoughts around all of that? Do you think it's been? Has it helped with accessibility? You know, what do you think the barriers have been? How do you feel about all of that? Um, I think. I mean. It has both, I mean, the, it has a, some kind of a double side of the sword, I think. Mm -hmm. This global pandemic has affected the accessibility of the, the visual literacy and also the drawing related practices as well. Because, you know, I mean, the, because of the physical limitations and physical barriers that, I mean, that emerged uh, due to this kind of ongoing global pandemic, uh, has seriously, I would say, uh, block barricaded people's, I mean, the accessibility or people's, I would say, uh, the freedom to uh, experiment their own way of drawing or visual, li visual literacy because you can't go outside freely, you can't go outside, hang out with other people and you can't go, you can't create it, uh, a face to uh, create and curate and produce face to face project as well. But so, but yeah, that's uh, clearly a very painful uh, limitation. Uh, that has been burdened to us, but um, but in other way, I mean, 
uh, because because of the under this new normal, I mean, uh, in some way, it facilitated a, a, another creative way of um, visual literacy and drawing as well. Because because people now start to, I mean, to use the I don't know. I mean, so for example, like a Google, I mean, Google platform or other types of digital platform to make some collaborative project together to that could enhance the visual literacy, which I also, I mean, had my own I mean, experience by, I mean, curating my own exhibitions and other linking projects as well, uh, which if you want, I would illustrate lately, uh, later, but um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, simply saying, I mean, this kind, this sort of, um, I mean, the, the new reality just uh, kills and in, disencourages uh, visual, I mean, the, 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 the development of the visual literacy in a way. But as, you know, the quotes from the famous movie uh, Interstellar, we'll, we'll, as always, we'll find a way. And that's what we're doing now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that's a mm. good quote. So tell us a bit more now, Jay, about about what you're working on at the moment, where you are. So maybe um, maybe give for the benefit of people on the call a little bit of background about the, where you are and the type of spaces that you're working mm -hmm. and curating in, because it's quite it's quite interesting. It's, it's quite an unusual, I suppose, for our from our sense of things, where it's quite an unusual setup. Yeah, uh, so now I'm currently based in South Korea, obviously, and my workplace is a uh, basically a complex, hospitality complex called the Paradise City. So it's not just a, so it's a, it's in, so in a way it's a bit, I would say, uh, not so, I mean, canonical art institution because basically this is, what I, where I'm working now is not an art organization because yeah. it's, it's a really 100% purely commercial, I mean, the, I mean, yeah, commercial uh, organizations dedicate to make profits. So. So our 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 facilities, I mean, is composed of the hotel, I mean, casinos, and art studios, art spaces, and boutique hotels, and plaza squares, and shopping centers. So almost, and it, and inside, and the Korean version of Harry Potter, I mean, studio as well, indoor theme park as well. So, so, so the place I'm working now is basically the, the coagulation of almost all the imaginable, I mean, the hospitality and entertainment facilities you can imagine. So it's gigantic uh, facility and now I'm running. I'm in charge of managing art collections and also the curating some art, I mean, the artistic practices within this venue as well. So I run the, there is a standalone building dedicated to the artistic practices called Paradise Art Space. And now I basically, I'm running the art spaces and curating an exhibition and also the linking events as well. So basically, so yeah, that's it. So I basically, there are two categories of uh, exhibitions and practices that I want, that I'm presenting, so that I've presented so far. So the one is contemporary and modern fine art, more traditional orthodox types of art, uh, normally, I mean, paintings and sculptures and of course drawings as well, yeah those kinds of uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional installations. And the other one is very multidisciplinary, experimental, and digital-based uh, media art practices, uh, which uh, with, uh, including some kind of robotics and AI-based art and, and also, very, yeah, yeah AI-based art and also they, they, they did some kind of sort of um, uh, video from the video installations and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. No, uh, that's, that's, that's it. That's, that's loads. I mean, going back to the space, Jay. So, and it, so I think that it, so it's yes, it's like a sort of a massive hotel, leisure, mm -hmm. entertainment complex, and it's high end, isn't it? This is a very mm -hmm. high end place. The, they have Five stars. A, yeah. How many stars? Five stars. Yes. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, the collection, so they obviously they have their own they have their own collection that you're able to dip in and out of and create shows, exhibitions around. Uh, but you're also bringing artists in, aren't you? And I know that you have brought in artists, um, local artists there, but obviously you've brought artists in from overseas, I believe, as well. Mm. Yeah, clearly, because I mean, they, we have uh, our own art collections as well. So 
you know, the our chairman is also the is the only Korean collectors are also the I mean registered one of the most prominent two hundred collectors in Artnet. Maybe you know the Artnet, yeah. So he's the only one only Korean art collector who is officially registered as the most one of the most influential global art collectors, uh, I mean the chosen by Artnet as well. So um, we have our loads of collections, more than actually three thousand uh, art pieces, blue chip art pieces within our complex as well. Yeah, including Jeff Koons, you know, Damien Hurst, all the so-called so much prestigious and uh, high-end art uh, art collections as well. And apart from that, also, um, in, you know, many of these, sorry, Jeff, presumably many of these, these are within public spaces, aren't they? They're part of the sort of the public realm space. You know, they're not all yeah. put into a space as, a, as part of a, an exhibition. It's, they are out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, around half of them is now, I mean, they also installed them on view uh, in the public spaces. So it's, so in a way, it, our site is more like, um, itself is like a, like a blue chip art museum as well, functioning as a blue chip art museum as well. All you need to do is just come and you can, I mean, navigate and appreciate a loads of um, globally renowned art collection without, with I mean, one hundred percent accessibility without any fee or any mm -hmm. uh, any types of limitations. So, um, so that's one of the I mean, the vision of our company. So, make your life as art. That's the vision uh, of our I mean, our company as well. So, so literally, uh, the, our chairman turned our site into a gigantic, in a way, a gigantic museum or gallery itself. So you can yeah. see all, already. On my back side, you can see the Fernando Botero's masterpieces as well. Yeah, so that's the thing. A, a question here, Jay, which maybe hmm. other people think is it, it? I mean, it's it's incredible. It's incredible to have this vision and all the rest of it. So, Sumi, lovely Sumi, has said, is it ticketed or free entry? I mean, could you just go in and could you wander around and take in all the beautiful spaces and look at some of the sculptures, installations, the artwork? Uh, you mean in this room? Yeah. Yeah. Would you be? Able to yeah, all right, so um, so would you be able to go in? I suppose free is what we're saying, Jay. I mean, obviously, not if you were staying in one of the hotel rooms, but would you be able to wander in and go around and look at everything for free? Uh, oh, you mean that, yeah, the hotel, I mean, um, yeah, every all the spaces have a wander around, yeah. So, uh, basically, if you pay a visit to our hotel, then you could wander around and almost appreciate almost all of our art collections, uh, for free except the artworks installed in the accommodation. Yes. You mean the yeah, private spaces, yeah. So if so, I was um, there, and I, I wasn't going to actually stay in the hotel, but I thought, well, I want to have a little wander around. I'd be allowed yeah, to wander around. around, get a cup of tea, look at some of the fantastic artwork. Absolutely, yeah. So um, no ticketed area. Uh, in terms of, in case of the public spaces, you could appreciate, even you right. could, yeah. yeah, you could uh, you could uh, appreciate our art exhibition in our art space uh, without any kind of uh, payment once you registered our membership. It's it's free membership basically, so yeah. you don't have to pay anything. So um, you could have access to, I mean, all our public area plus our art space as well without any kinds of. Um, financial burden as well, basically, yeah. Yeah, well, that's good to know. I, I suppose one of the questions I had for you, Jen, because obviously having worked with you, I know, you, I know that you're, you know, incredibly socially engaged, you know, that you feel strongly about community engagement, social, civic engagement, all of these, these types of themes as well, and accessibility. Do you, since you've been at this amazing, this incredible place, which, you know, let's be let's be very straight about it. You know, clearly funding is not going to be an issue. It's within a commercial environment. It's a totally different ball game. Um, it's you know, and that it is. It's a different entity. Do you do you think that what you're bringing into it is helping to sort of mould the agenda in terms of accessibility, outreach, thinking about the collection, accessibility? How do you do you think that you're helping to influence that in any way? Um, yeah, I mean, that's the theme or that's the topic that I, I'm, I'm seriously considering because, you know, of course, I mean, we are naturally contributing to our society in terms of the accessibility to art and also by 
install, installing and I mean they're providing this kind of amazing collections without almost without any limitations to our society as well but apart from I mean I think also I agree that's that's not enough so um so what I'm thinking now is that I think I mean currently I'm I'm thinking of creating a pilot project for example like a pilot project or 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 some kind of I mean, building a scheme that could actually advocate the accessibilities and some something like for example like a more social political issues because what I'm really now seriously thinking of in my in my mind is that some kind of a BLM I, I was seriously inspired by the recent BLM uh, Black Lives Matters movement as well because yeah. because oh, yeah it's a, also in Korea also that's also that yeah obviously that was thing that was the movement happened in America but also even in the South Korea and the uh, it is a kind of a universal topic that we should really I mean consider and provocate uh, so evoke seriously about that so um so basically I'll, uh, so now I'm thinking of some kind of guide of uh, launching some kind of pilot project that could uh, that could actually provoke uh, the people about the importance of uh, so-called inclusive community inclusive importance of inclusive society and also the the, 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 the thoughts about the so-called marginalized people like um, like a minors or the some social socially uh, socially I would say uh, uh, social and economically uh, under my uh, underdog people as well so um, so that's it uh, actually uh, uh, I mean this year uh, uh, amid the pandemic is also the a serious problem in South Korea as well. I also uh, produce a kind of a film, uh, social. What, what's the what's the term? I mean, the, it's called the public service ad. Oh, called yeah, it's called public service ad type film, uh, with the collaborations of the featuring our, our featuring artists, so that I should give, I mean, the, give encourage the artists and the people around and the people around around the world who is now fighting on the front line of the, this kind of a, a nightmare COVID pandemic so that a week I could some kind of uh, give them some kind of hope and the courage and help them by uh, 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 the, the enhancing, uh, raising the awareness of the, mm -hmm. the social solidarity against this kind of uh, crucial uh, reality as well. So mm -hmm. you could check uh, if you, uh, you could check if you check our social media or website uh, you could enjoy the you could appreciate the uh, advertised film as well so yeah i mean kate as you mentioned this uh in terms of the so uh, the embracing the social issues and the pol yeah. even the political issues uh in my in my artistic practice is one of the most important topic to me which i'm really digging in now so um so yeah uh you could uh I'll, you could uh, you and the audiences could um, yeah, uh, expect my upcoming practices uh, about that as well. Yeah. Mm. Have a, we've got a little another comment. So this is from Sumi again. So she's just written film Parasite highlighted mm. the socio-economic difference, same as exists in her own native country of Sri Lanka. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Parasite. Oh, you mean a the movie? Film, film. A film. Yeah. Yeah. The film. I suppose it's like it's like anywhere, isn't it? There's going to be um, there's, there's cultural economic differences between different groups. There's always going to be mm -hmm. have the people who have the have nots. It's it's like it's everywhere. I suppose it's that thing. You know, if you have if you're in a position there where you have a platform or in any sort of privileged position, and I know that you you like us feel the same. You want to try and do what you can. You know, you need you want to try and do good as much as you can or, or check positive. Yeah, exactly. But it sounds like you're working in an incredibly progressive organisation already, which is fantastic, and that you're getting yeah. that, that input and support. Um, so tell us a bit more specifically then, Jay, what you're working on at the moment. Um, you're working on a particular project or an exhibition, apart from this new, very exciting project, sounds like you're developing behind the scenes. But what are you actually working on at the moment? Let me get my pen, so carry on. Yeah, yeah so... Is it an exhibition at the moment, or what's your current project yeah. 
yeah. So I just finished. Uh, I just finished my the ambitious uh, ambitious multidisciplinary art project called the A Perceptional Glimpse. I mean, trauma traumatized conventions. It's a it's a kind of mixture of uh, video installations. I mean, the video in art installations and the I mean the media art performance as well. Uh, featured by amazing, I mean, the Canadian artist Herman Colgan and uh, also uh, Japanese artist Shohei Fujimoto and Kyoka as well. So, so, uh, so simply saying that my number one, I mean, the, the, the course or topic uh, currently as an art curator is the, is kind of a, uh, a perceptional, uh, literally a perceptional uh, recognition and translation about this ongoing reality because because it's because this i mean the, this pandemic does not merely affect uh, our society and our body not just in a biological way but also but it will i mean it will unprecedentedly transform our society in political social and cultural way Everything. even though even after this pandemic ends you know yeah. so as an art curator i find myself that my mission as a media art curator is to i mean to, to create and provide the opportunity to the general public and all, even or not just art audience but general uh, public to upper, i mean to recognize the uh, recognize the importance and the uh, the effect uh, effect of this kind of a reality and in the post pandemic reality as well, and then what should we do? Uh, basically, uh, what should we do? And the, the and the what should we do? And where should we position ourselves among our surroundings? Because it's kind, in a way, it's similar to some kind of a environment movement, environmental movement as well, because because this kind of a pandemic is sort of a warning sign to our entire human society as a species that you should, the human beings should be more humble. Uh, and we should admit that we are very humble positions among our surroundings uh, because even this kind of a teeny tiny invisible virus could have the potential to destroy our entire society, human society as well. So we should raise our awareness of our environment. And at the same time, we should be more smart and be more wise to, to decide where, what, which, which sort of, which directions that, that we should go in our future as well. So that's the, that's the main theme and the main topic of our uh, in my mind uh, now as well. And as an art curator, I try to throw these questions and throw this question to the general audience uh, with form of artistic practices so that they could stop and think, rethink about, okay, I got it. Uh, that's the question that Jay Bong is trying to deliver. And okay, I think that's, that's the worth the food for thoughts and I should consider it seriously. That's the things, and I'm now I'm now in 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 that in in the, in that sense now I'm preparing a gigantic a mega scale solo exhibition of the Herman Kogan with the more focus on the the topological I mean position of human beings in post pandemic reality. So um, that's it. That's the main topic of my upcoming exhibition next year, and the. And the, the event uh, last month is some, a sort of a teaser trailer uh, practices for uh, the, me the, the, the concept and the messages that I want to deliver. So you could check uh, at the Instagram account, pas.media.art, if you would like to look I more. Think, I don't know they're still on, but I certainly saw them pop on earlier, mm. the course, they, they, mm. they popped on earlier. So Sumi's just said, already, Jay, you set such a gold standard to the rest of the world, how to manage the virus. Yes, if only already more people were Thanks. talking about this. But no, it's really interesting to hear that it's already starting to embed your developing um, curatorial practice. Um, so just thinking, now, just going back to what you're saying in terms of some of the artists that you've been working with as well, 
do you have I can't I was gonna say who's your, I can't say that I can't say who's your favorite artist it's not fair on the other artists is there an artist that you've worked with that or an exhibition or project that you have sort of particularly it's gelled for you that you've really enjoyed working with it's been really inspirational and that you sort of really bounced off each other uh yeah of course yeah, loads of standout project that you worked on over there hmm. Yeah, loads of, but uh, the most memorable artist that uh, uh, still cross my, uh, that crossed my mind now is the, of course, UK-based artist named Random International. So, um, yeah. So, the Hannes Co and the uh, uh, and his staff. So, uh, basically, they're artists collective based in London. And I curated their first comprehensive solo show in Asia. So, um, yeah, so, and um, it was a, uh, it was a very impressive and it was a very unforgettable moment because, because it just, the, the exhibition was not just a presentation of their existing artworks, but I, what I asked for and I, I, what I, what I forced for, forced for them was to literally upgrade your entire array, your entire art world, art world, both in terms of techn technological excellence and also in terms of artistic creativity as well. So uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is, and the result was so successful that I would cry, I would proudly, I mean, promote and present you guys. You could check the footages if you want to our Paradise YouTube channel, but yeah. So in, so in terms of scale, scale and quality, I double, I doubled almost all of the artworks, uh, uh, all of their artworks in, in terms of scale, which also requires a huge upgrade of hardware, uh, hardware form factor and software re-engineering as well. It was a really, really painstakingly uh, hard and it was very, um, it was unbelievably challenging, but, uh, but they recognized my I would say ambitious vision as an accurate, I mean, media curator, and they appreciate it and they admit it, acknowledge it. And so, yeah, what they said was, okay, Jane, let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's, I mean, let's just get, let's get this, uh, this, I mean, get, let's get our boys upgraded uh, in this, I mean, on this opportunity. So I did it. I mean, for example, like the robot, the artwork with robotics arms tied up 15 points. It was, it was almost three times uh, I break the record of their, in terms of the size of their robotics based uh, artworks and the, also the, the quality of the motion dynamics of the artworks as well. And also in terms of the artistic creativity, I, what I propose them to is, okay, uh, one, of, one of your artwork titled that the, I mean, the, what's the, what's the uh, printing portrait, a uh, self portrait. Uh, is it is based basically based on the some kind of uh, 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 what is it the I mean the auto recognition pattern, automatic recognition algorithm, and print it, print the audience's uh, face or posture on the surface of the wooden panel uh, with the some kind of a laser ink material, something like that. Okay, so what I proposed was that to, okay, apart from the upgrading the scale. Why don't we actually uh, use some kind of a CCTV devices, uh, CCTV devices, uh, actual CCTV devices for the artwork, so that we could deliver some kind of a social message that, for example, how uh, in uh, the people in modern society is relentlessly and meticulously supervised by the so-called Big Brother's eye and the political and social dangers and risks embedded in it. So yeah, they think, okay, Jay, that's a good idea. Yeah, so that's what I propose. So not merely just, I mean, the mimicking or I mean, simulated uh, mimicking or the picture, the actual portrait of an audiences, I try to deliver that sort of kind of uh, artistic, socially artistic maybe, socially artistic message to the audiences that, okay, guys, uh, whoever you saw this Whoever, whoever, whoever appreciated this kind of artwork, this is not just an entertaining device is that, I mean, they, I mean, they represent your posture or your own faces on the wooden panel 
by the process of laser printing, but also it reminds you uh, the danger of the so-called uh, social, I mean, the, tech, the, the surveillance, the social surveillance that uh, become the almost natural part of our life because, because what you're, or the devices, what you're filming now is actual CCTV. So, um, so that's it. That's, that's the thing that I conducted uh, while curating the exhibition. So, um, so it, was, it was hard and sometimes I want to give up because it was, it was too demanding uh, to actually to uh, make this happen within a limited amount of time, but uh, with the sincere support of the technical staff and the artists themselves as well, we made it, and it was the reputation and result was uh, real, unbelievably um, fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Wow, pioneering work. I think, Joe. Yeah. If people want to go and see some of this, they can. They can head over to your Instagram account, I think, and see it on yeah. there. Or then be signposted through to the um, Paradise link. Sorry. Paradise. Mm -hmm. I had a question from from Sandra in the, in the team RM, which was just asking more to you as an individual, your creative practice, or what it is that you like to do. I mean, you know, you you know that um, certainly in the Big Draw team, we know apart from you know all the stuff that we're doing as part of the charity we also um when we get time which isn't very often but we do sort of all sketch and knit well i knit and so and you know that we're all sort of a, we, we are also a genuinely creative team wanting to do crafts and arts and design and do stuff in our in our free time um what's your what would you say for yourself um sorry uh could you could you could you Yes. I mean, the if you're if you've got some some downtime or some free free time, do you do? Would you do some sketching or photography or make, you know? Obviously, I know you make films, but just for you as part of your own sort of creative downtime, your, your own creative practice. What what is it for you that that helps you? I say, I know if I want to relax, I will do a bit of sketching, a bit of knitting, or a bit of sewing, something like that. But I mean, everyone's got their own their own. Thing. Yeah, I, I mean, as I mean, as Kate uh, introduced me, I'm also an um, amateur artist as well, and my personal, I mean, the creative hobby is two things. Also, the one thing is I mean, sound making. I mean, the, based on the machine learning technology, and the other one is also the drawing, sketching and drawing, uh, with my iPad. You can see, mm -hmm. so um, yeah, the th the two things because I mean the. I mean, uh, the first, uh, the sound making uh, based on the, this kind of machine learning tech, I mean, the algorithm is a thing that, is a thing that enabled me to familiarize myself to the cutting edge technologies. For example, one of the AI machine learning, why, because naturally while I'm doing this kind of sound making things, I naturally, I mean, uh, get the understanding, get the solid understanding about the basic mechanism of the machine learning and algorithm and artificial the core beauty of the artificial intelligence both in terms of technology and also the tool for artistic practices as well and also powerful artistic media as well so this the one uh, and the and the outcome is totally different because you know that the most of the artistic practices are more like is more poised to be visual centric you know but the sound making, I could purely, I would say, vitalize my other senses of, for example, like, I mean, the audio, audio senses or some kind of even haptic senses, you know, that very strong sound could come to you as a haptic sense, you know, you, you could feel the strong sound with your skin as well, right? So, um, so that's very helping for me to, I would say, develop my uh others non non visual sense of uh aesthetics uh like that and then the second one visual drawing of course this one is very almost very essential and indispensable because when i try to curate something or produce something the most important thing is to visualize my idea or actually as i said uh visualize or express my idea in in very i would say I call it a very primitive form <laughs> and um, and drawing 
and sketching and drawing is the one of the most powerful way to keep your organized fresh ideas, and, isn't it? It's how it helps you organize yeah. your ideas, absolutely. I yeah, ideas, it. yeah. Keep my fresh and but fresh experimental but very unstable idea to more uh, I would say understandable and and presentable to other people mm -hmm. so that I could share the idea with them and they develop them and pivot them into more feasible and more uh, or more thought provoking and more even awe inducing uh, presentation as well. So, and that's this kind of habit is the thing that I learned, uh, that I learned and that I was learned from the big draw as well, because, because it was just, I started this habit just three years ago and three years ago, that's the, uh, is, is, the, is the exact time that I, I mean, that, that I left the big draw. So I start, I still kept this, I'm keeping this habit uh, since I joined the big draw and after, even after I leaving uh, the, your, the, the big draw as well. So um, this, the two things uh, is, the, is, the, is the thing that I really enjoyed in my free time as well. So, yeah. I'm, well, I'm very glad to hear that, Jay. Very glad. Hmm. You know that we all do that in the team all the time. I mean, Jay will know that any meeting I'm at, virtual or when we were, used to be allowed to have physical meetings, I will be just literally just spending the whole time. I am, and I'm listening. I'm just, I take notes and I take my notes and doodle forms. It helps me remember better. And um, if I can't, if I'm tired, particularly, I think, um, and I, I'm trying to explain something to somebody, but I will just sketch it out. It's often a lot easier, isn't it? Um, just a quick question that came through the feed and I've written it down because I don't know if I'm going to say the name correctly. So somebody on the call was saying, do you have Nam June Pakes or Packs in the collection? Now, I don't know if I've said that correctly, so forgive me if I have to the artist. Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah, we have Nam June Pakes collection and it's one of them, uh, one of them is also, I mean, is now presented, is being presented in our site as well. So if you want to appreciate it, just come to our site and have a look. I mean, and for your record, the pieces, uh, actually the name of the pieces is Hitchcock. So that's the piece uh, that Namjoon Pak created uh, based on the inspirational uh, film of Alfred Hitchcock. So Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, Alfred Hitchcock. So you won't regret it. Yeah, every single, I mean, second of your visit will worth it. So um, please be my guest. <laughs> um, so I, that's a couple of questions. So one, another question that's come through, which I was about to ask, was, um, yeah, what was your what what was your favorite thing about working for the Big Draw? Yeah, the most, I mean, the, the I mean, the, the, the most, I mean, my favorite part while I'm working the Big Draw is that I mean, the, I mean, the first first and foremost, I like all of including you, Kate, I liked all the peoples in the big draw. So, so basically working and I mean, having, having a conversation and, uh, and the working as a team member itself was the first thing that I enjoyed. And the second thing is, I mean, the, the, I mean, the, it's, it just expand my, the, I mean, the, 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 the cultural boundary and also the, uh, I mean, the art creative boundary of, uh, a creative boundary of my inspiration because you just, I mean, you with you with you guys, I went to, for example, like a Newcastle and Manchester, Manchester as well, various parts of the England and the UK, and I experienced a lot of creative people at there and and the amazing, and various types of organizations like schools and other art institutions and the and the, all, almost all types of art festivals and with the, for example, like a Turner Prize and the, the Big Draw Festival as well, I could learn, I could learn and naturally get the knowledge, uh, get, the, I mean, get the grasp of literally almost all sort of imaginable drawing practices around the world, right? So, um, so, so it was, it was, um, Oh, I just lost you for one I second there, Jeff. Yeah, but you're back. Oh, okay, back. So yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's the that's thing. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I really enjoyed it. So um, so uh, so yeah. Very, I, no, 
both a creative and collaborative team. We do have fun. Mm, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I had a question, um, which was, we haven't touched on, I mean, you've had, you know, you've had sort of a stellar progression with your career and, you know, at the risk of sounding like an old bag or your mum, and I personally am very incredibly proud of you. You know that we, we miss you at the big draw and we miss all the people that come through the big draw in the team. And it's lovely to be able to come back and sort of revisit that and see where they've, where they've gone and where they're heading to next. And I can see that there's some incredible things ahead of you, Jay. But it's all been so positive. We haven't really talked much about any of the challenges. And I mean, and I just, I'm, I'm talking about the challenges really for you as an individual. So, you know, coming over to the UK, doing the course. I mean, have you experienced any challenges, any, um, any prejudice? You know, what's been difficult? But ha what, you know, with some of the things that you've been touching on earlier, about what's been going on, particularly in the last, I suppose, six, eight months, six to eight months. What about your personal experiences? Have you had anything? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, there, there have been uh, several challenges that I faced while I'm staying in the UK. So, um, so one of the most was critical one, critical, critical one was also the language barrier, of course. I'm still- I may uh, just I'm say still... it's absolutely perfect. So obviously, you know, I don't speak any Korean because I know that you're also, you speak Japanese as well, don't you? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, was, yeah, exactly. So, um, so, so uh, yeah, of course, and the language barrier and also the cultural difference that I, uh, cultural difference, uh, for example, uh, is the one that I, uh, that uh, at that time, I mean, comes, I mean, came me as a kind of, um, some kind of, uh, for example, like an Everest to come forward or something like that, because, you know, the, the, the thinking process and the values and norms are, are, are quite different from the, that I, that I had in, the, in South Korea as well. Uh, so that kind of things. And, and also uh, sometimes it was, uh, it was a kind of, um, it was, it feels a burden or sometimes it, it feels like a, uh, on 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 unquenchable challenge to me that in the while I'm staying in the UK I have to consider so-called some kind of uh, ethnic diversity and, and the, 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 some kind of uh, all almost all sort of diversity uh, in a, in every single moment while I'm working because that was a big challenge to me because you know the Korea South Korea is almost like a very homogeneous society in terms of not in terms of just ethnic backgrounds but also the cultural background brown and also the economic economic social and cultural background as well so while I'm when I first uh, so they were while I'm working in the UK and in the big draw it's almost very shocking to me it was a very and it's sometimes sometimes I mean make made me feel, feel kind of a some kind of frustrated because I'm not so familiar to that, that sort of diversity as well so that's the challenge that I experienced, but also at the same time, it was not only the challenge that I want that I faced, but also it was a sort of a, sort of a lessons and sort of a very uh, precious. I mean, the um, curatorial and cultural asset that has been given to me as well. Uh, are you there, Kate? I mean, the, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, so that's it. That's the that's the challenges that I experienced uh, of my stay in the UK. So and I think uh, it was really a it was a challenge basically, but at the same time, as I said, it was really a good lesson and um, it was a really um, I would say a very cherishable uh, time and experience to me as well. Yeah. Well, I'm just looking at the clock. So we've got, we've just got a couple of minutes, I think, left, Jay. I just suppose, is there anything, anybody who is on the call, is there any more questions? So maybe we could give anybody an opportunity to ask any questions. But is there anything else that you'd like to thread out, Jay, that um, perhaps you've missed? I mean, one thing that I've ringed on my notes, just I think it's probably just because I'm personally interested in it. I mean, you were talking about AI and robotic art, and I suppose it's, it's really interesting, isn't it, the way that art is heading and starting to think about what role that will play within it um, and computer art and where the line ends between the, if you like, the hand of 
the human and where that begins and ends with the hand of a computer or a robot or however you want to you know because there's there's, lot, there's artwork being made with algorithms all the time mm. you know, being basically mm. produced by computers but you know at, at what point does that thread in i'm always very interested in all of that um but, I mean, maybe that's a, probably a very big question. So yeah, that's a big maybe question. We should do a follow up. Maybe we should do a whole session just around um, AI and, and art because I we have literally got one or two minutes left. So a simpler question that's come through: Art supplies you couldn't live without. With a good sensible question that people often want to know: Do you have a? Is there a particular art supplies that you like to use, or you know, if it's more digital, is it Procreate? You know, what packages are you using? Uh, maybe, I mean, the, the art supplies that I can live out with is probably my, uh, the laptop with an algor embedded algorithm making program in it. Yeah, that's the, uh, my number one art supplies to me. And the second one is Yuso and the, my iPad and Apple Pencil for, as I said, for sketches and drawings. Yeah, yeah. that's the two, <laughs> the, the, those are the two, two, two art supplies that I couldn't live out with because my almost entire I mean, projects and the I mean, curatorial uh, practices start from this kind of this sort of with the assistance of these supplies. Supplies, so um, yeah, yeah. Okay, and hmm. I've been nudged by my colleague. I have, which I should have mentioned at the beginning, but you have a blog piece coming up with us, don't you, Jay? Soon, so we'll be working mm -hmm. on soon the team will be working with you on that um so we'll be following up and i'm not sure when we'll we'll do that but it will be probably in the next maybe just before christmas or after christmas i don't want to commit team members but i might be doing the work but it won't be long and um it will be fantastic you'll be able to hear a lot more about what jay has to say and and follow up on some maybe a bit more some of the things that we've, we've started to touch on in here and if jay if people have more questions or want to get in touch with you um, I mean, they can either get in touch with us, and I can I can thread them through. Sure, they they can find you quite easily on on Instagram, can't they? So. Yeah, I can. You can easily find on, on my Instagram account that that uh, the big draw posted it on their account. So uh, if you have any questions or further inquiries or any creative suggestions or ideas, then just I mean, drop me a line through my Instagram account, I, I mean, a direct message or I mean uh, any sort of any types of um, I mean signaling, any types of signal you could use. So. Um, then I'm totally open to it and I'm looking forward to them even. So um, yeah, please. So I think we're gonna to have to wrap it up now before I go over the time because we've got mm -hmm. one minute left. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. As I say, I'm incredibly proud of you. And I say, I know that makes me sound like an old granny, but I am. Uh, and yeah, we will, pleasure. obviously this will sit on Instagram TV as a resource and we will also uh, download it. We'll put it on YouTube as well. And maybe we can do some subtitles with it into Korean. I don't know. We'll have to think about that as well. So, but thank you so much. I'm going to go. Thanks. So, yeah, thanks much. And um, thank you. Thank Mr. you. Before. And we'll, we'll talk to you very soon about the blog piece. Absolutely. Yes. Looking so forward to it. love to you. We miss you still. I miss you too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.